Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to use foam to make a supporting mold for my stained glass projects. My task was to make a support to use when creating stained glass projects, mainly lamps. I like to start off with a bought lamp frame or take an old lamp and take the covering off of it. This gives me a nice armature to work off of. It's nice and strong and it's already symmetrical and ready to use. These are some of the projects I have made in the past using um, frames, mainly ones that I have gotten from Goodwill or some other inexpensive source. The important considerations I felt were number one, it has to fit the contour of my project because that's what I want. I want to be able to put my little pieces of glass on it. And I also want the surface to be easy to pin into. I like to use either tacks or um, sewing pins. And I want the surface to resist melting somehow because if the solder falls in between the cracks, I want to make sure it doesn't like sizzle away. I also make it, want it to be not too hard to create and I still don't want it to cost very much. So the first try, I, I was trying this um, great stuff foam that you'd use like in your house to fill cracks. It's, it's really nice, it, it expands and you can just spray it on into your um, project. Now they say that you can um, just use some and then use it again. Sometimes that works and then some other times it seems to like dry up. So it's best to use what you really need all at once, but it's possible. So my first try, I decided I would coat my existing lampshade with a liquid silicon and then fill it with spray foam. I did use a release agent um, before I coated it with silicon. But you will see in this part of the video how the spray foam looks when you're using it. You just pull the trigger and it comes out and then it expands while it's drying. Now I would definitely suggest using the spray foam that is for thicker um, projects. You don't want a spray foam that's only wants to be one inch thick because it might not dry. And yeah, I probably should not have used as much because I mean, I, it did say that it expands, but here I am, I'm trying to shove it in so there's no airs holes. And yeah, oops, it uh, grew more than I expected it to. But that's okay. So it got all puffy and kind of expanded over the top. Make sure you put it on something so if it drools over the edge while it's expanding, it doesn't kill your surface. So yeah, see, it's kind of sticks up. But that's easy to fix. The excess is easy to trim with a small saw. This is like one of those exacto type craft saws. So I just sawed the top off and you can see that piece of foam that I kept um, that I didn't use. And that's, that's the saw. The problem was that it was really hard to remove the outside of the cover, I realized. This whole idea of doing the silicon first and then 
Um, and then doing the foam, well, it, it really wasn't a very good idea because I think it probably took like an hour for me to pry the lampshade cover off and the foam kind of stuck to the middle area of the, um, of the lampshade. So as you can see, I was kind of fighting with it. But, you know, it's one of those uh, live and learn things. So I ended up with a foam shape, which really was nice and smooth. And I then covered that foam shape with some liquid silicon. So two parts, liquid silicon you can buy anywhere like on Amazon or something. And this is what it, it kind of drooled over the edges. This is because I thought the liquid silicon, um, you know, once it hardens, would help protect the foam. And it, and it did. It doesn't um, tend to dissolve quickly. So that was my finished product. You can see that there's um, some areas at the top where it didn't really fill out. But then I, then I realized I really don't need the whole lampshade to be a, a shape. I really only need um, a section because I can move the foam armature around as I'm using it. This is another lampshade that I um, did. See how I, I sectioned off a part of the lampshade this time. Now the trouble with this project was that the lampshade itself was made of a plastic stuff and it didn't really dry very much. And as you can see, once I took it out, the stuff that wasn't dried kind of gooed out in little like worms, but that's okay. I just carved them off. And here I, I filled some of the, the bigger areas with some more foam and then I just carved that off. So that was okay. Um, as you can see, this, um, this product project, I, I filled it in sections of foam. So instead of one big one um, fill, I filled it in a few different layers, which was fine. It did tend to not have as big holes. I still had to fill some areas, but um, it, it does come out with like lots of seams and still some holes. And as you can see, yeah, it's kind of ugly. Um, it's, I use the clear silicones for some of this. So that's why it's a weird color. All of my um, glass lampshades, when I, when I buy these metal frames, I cover the, the metal armature with foil. And I have lots of videos on doing this, but I, I, I put on um, this, regular foil that you would use on flat glass and I just wrap it around the um the frame so that my solder wants to stick to it because most metal um lampshade frames that I found don't want to accept solder so putting um the foil on it works nicely well you can see that now I'm using my armature to um to hold my stones or my glass, and I can use pins. I also have a silicon washers that I also um, put underneath things to help hold them the right distance up. And it, this really helped um, having these armatures to, to put underneath. I did learn that um, the foam that is there that I'm using to hold up my fish lampshade is it's really good that I put silicon on the other on the other ones that I use all the time inside the lampshade because when the solder does does spill onto that um, other piece it does kind of melt into the foam. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, and that fish lamp will be in a video when I finish it. Um, please subscribe to my channel and thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.